Soon I'm going to start dropping Python videos and I want you to be prepared for that. So we're going to cover three things in this video. We're going to cover what I plan to do, how I plan to teach Python and Matplotlib. The second one will be how you install or not Python, I'll tell you all about it. And the third one is recommended courses, things, courses that I would recommend you to take before my series start. Okay, let's get started. So as you probably heard or not, I am learning Python and I'm learning Matplotlib too, which is the visualization part of Python. And uh, I am going to show you here to start with some tutorials of what I'm learning so you can learn with me. So I've been thinking of how should I deliver this? And here's the thing, I am a very practical person. I learn by doing stuff, not by listening or reading. I have to do it. And um, if you are like me, I think you're going to enjoy this series. Here's what I plan to do. I, I'm having some technical issues, but hopefully they will get resolved very soon. What I'm planning to do is we will do the theory first, so you don't have to Google yourself to death like I'm doing. And then I will give you a challenge that you will have to code based on what I teach you on that module or on previous modules. So there will be, you know, added um, difficulties as we go along. So I really recommend you to start from video one. I'm going to call the challenges bites because, you know, they say that you cannot eat an elephant in one bite. You have to have it in small bites. I think the same applies for a python um, animals. So we're going to do it in bites. And um, I think it's going to be a fun way to do it. Let's see. Let, let's give it a go. Um, I already have a few bites for you, but uh, I, again, some technical issues hopefully will get resolved very, very soon. Now, the second thing that you need to do before I get started with my videos is install or not Python. <laughs> what I mean with not installing Python is that you can actually do Python without installing it on your computer, which is actually quite nice if you are in an enterprise environment where you are not allowed to install things. Well, you can still do this stuff on your working computer. So there are different methods. The, this is the way I got started with Python. It was using Google Collab. So they borrow you the computer so you can, where everything is installed, and then you can write Python there. And I'm going to show you the, put the link down below so you can go and grab it. It's, it's super, super neat. And it's using like a Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Nodes. I'll tell you what that is in the first video. Um, so it is a really good way to get started with Python, especially if you're not sure if this is something for you. So you don't have to install anything. So I got started with um, Google Collab. And then what I did is I installed Python on my computer. Why? Because I wanted to be able to do it offline. And there are some obviously restrictions when you're doing Google Collab because they have to make sure that you don't do anything but their computers, obviously. So uh, I prefer to install it. So the first time I installed it, I actually you know, went to the command line and wrote Python and then it popped up the, you know, the Microsoft Store now holds Python, um, installs. So you have all of them. You don't have to install 3.10. You can install any version of Python. And uh, if you install it, it will install it locally in your computer and then you can run Python. And the thing with this is that you have to install everything else too and make sure there are no conflicts and things like that, which it gets a little bit cumbersome. So I move from install it to my computer to install it using Anaconda. I'm going to also put the link and I go on that, uh, on down below. The thing with this is that it has everything that you need for data science. So it has Matplotlib, NumPy, Pandas. I'll tell you what all of that stuff is already fixed for you. And it comes with Jupyter Labs, which I absolutely love. So this is the way that I ended up installing it. There has a ton of stuff that I don't need, which is a little bit inconvenient, but the convenient thing is that they maintain the environment for you, okay? So if you are set into, I am going to learn Python, this is probably the best way to install it. You just click download for Windows or Mac and then you're good to go. It's just no, it's, it's not a weird thing. There is a path though. So when you install this, there's probably a solution, but if you're using 
Python together with Power BI, you will have to start Power BI in the Python environment. I will tell you more about that later. It's a little bit inconvenient, but it works. And I'll show you how to do that once we cross that bridge. Okay, so you either use Google Colab, that's how I started, or you install directly on your computer. I've done that too, and now I'm with Anaconda with this. Okay, I found that it's the most convenient. So it is good that you have a little bit of knowledge before I start. If you start from zero, 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 I mean, you will be able to do it, obviously, but I recommend you to have at least one, you know, fundamental Python course. And here's the thing. This is what I've done, at least. I have not used the computer while taking the course. None of those two courses that I've taken at all. Which means that, you you know, I'm actually going now to my office on, on the bus so I can take the courses on the bus, otherwise it's not possible. And it's the only way I have to take the time to learn it. So um, I've been able to take those two courses on the bus and it's quite convenient, actually. And again, no computer. You don't need to. I actually installed Python on my iPad and I'm running Python on my iPad, which is... It's not bad. I mean, it's, it's fine. When, you're, when I'm traveling, it's a neat way to, to use it. But um, yeah. Anyhow, the courses. There is one free and the other one, I don't know if it costs any money. <laughs> I actually don't know. Uh, but the first one that is completely free is this by Socratica. Lovely lady. She's a lot of fun. And uh, I started with this. This was my first Python course. The thing is that it's very like high level course, okay? So I then found this course on LinkedIn Learning from Ryan Mitchell, it's called Python Essentials, Python Essential Training. Really, really good. Again, I did not do any of the challenges, I did not do any of the coding, but I did follow every single lesson because it gives me an idea of what I actually can do and cannot do in Python. And then when I've been finding things while I'm coding, I remember her, I say, oh, that's what they mean. So it's actually quite useful. Obviously, you can do the courses and you can do the challenges and you can follow along with your computer. But if you don't have the time, it's very useful just to, to listen to her. What she does is she goes through the essentials of Python in very short videos. So you can stop at any time. You know, when you get to my bus stop, I go out and then I can stop the video, it's fine. And it's actually very, very useful. So it will give you an idea of what you can and cannot do and what the terminology is for Python, it will get you started. And then with my videos, then we can start all the learning. So remember, two things that you need to do. One, decide if you want to install Python or not, be ready. The other one, take one of these two courses just to have an idea of how to get started, right? And then I think hopefully in a week or two, next week I can do a video either way just to introduce you to everything. But then the first bite, it will probably come in a week or two if I manage to fix my small technical issues. So, I oh, I've been doing a lot of math plot leave, as I told you. I, did I tell you? Maybe. I'm completely obsessed with math plot leave, the visualization part of Python. And I have all my code on Corporal Data Labs GitHub. And you can see here the visualizations I've done. The code is in there too. So if you want to check it out, you can do it to get inspiration about what it is that you're going to get if you actually follow along. Um, the code is not very good. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to create any more visualizations. I'm actually going to review the code to get a mental map of how to work with Matplotlib so I can deliver it in the good way to you because it's you know one of the things that I've been finding out about Python is that you can do the same thing in a million ways like DAX which means that is very powerful but if you don't make that mental map in your head you will get stuck all the time so you, it's better to find what is the latest and greatest and stick to that than trying all the different methods that you have, okay? So I'm going to make that mental map and then as soon as I have it and as soon as we're a little bit warm with Python, we will add Matplotlib uh, tutorials to the channel. But I think it's too early 
if you are new, new, new to Python to actually start doing this type of stuff. Not that I know exactly how to do it, but you know, I've been managing somehow. Okay, so next week it will be the first video, just an introduction. The introduction that I wish that I had when I got started, you will get it. And then we will start with the small coding challenges, and then we will continue to uh, do this type of uh, data analysis. I'm really looking forward to it. So, see you next week. Well, no, we'll see you tomorrow. I need to finalize the 25 days of Dax Fridays, the last 10 days. It's going to take me forever to do that video. And then I will um, see you again next week with another Power BI video and the first. Python video. So, take care. Bye-bye.